Impact Girl tribe and welcome to a brand new episode of Impact Girl. I am very excited today actually because, uh, well, I'm always excited, but today particularly (laughs) because today's guest is an entrepreneur that I feel lucky to call a friend, Um, but she's also a woman that um, I constantly look up to, especially when it comes to taking care of yourself, balancing life and work, and uh, committing to any process or sticking to any good habit. So uh, her name is Anita Chaperon. Uh, Hi, Anita, and thank you for being with us today. Hi, Cecilia. Um, I'm just as excited as you are because we've got a few kind of really useful bits to share with people and always get excited when when I'm given the opportunity um, to, you know, to transform other people's, you know, the way they see health, the way they see looking after themselves. So, um, yeah, thank you for giving me that opportunity. (laughs) Thank you. And actually, I know that's your mission. You want more and more people to realize that taking care of business, using your own words, means also taking care of the business of ourselves, which I actually love because that's usually uh, what we tend to forget. We're always constantly on the run trying to chase the next big thing. And we don't realize that the biggest thing that we have and we should treasure is our own health. And uh, as you say, we can't really afford to split business from well-being. Um, you actually created uh, a bio-upgrade method which is a low stress method that allows you to create and manage your best health. And you describe it as a cross between Kaizen and tiny habits with 22 (laughs) plus years of health know-how and uh, an optimized neat three-step process. And actually, this couldn't be more relevant to everybody listening right now. I mean, we're talking about business owners, but um, whether we have an established business or we just started out, most of us are always so busy and we try to juggle a million different things at the same time. And while I think this may give us a temporary sense of significance and importance, um, the price that we pay is, um, is just something, as you say, that we can't afford. I mean, I'm talking about health, but ha- as well happiness um, and, and like true satisfaction. So in the next 20 to 30 minutes, girls, we want to empower you to take control of your health one small change at a time, right? Because if we don't have the energy to keep going, we don't have the focus, we are not productive. And so how can our business thrive? How can it perform? How can we really feel successful? So Anita, we're all yours. I don't want to, um, <laughs> you know, like talk too much because I can't wait to dig into uh, this simple three-step method um, that we can start using to create the health we want. Yeah. And I mean, that was a brilliant introduction. Thank you for doing that. And, um, you know, just to continue on from there, uh, obviously, everybody listening, please um, take all the discussions over here simply as ideas of how you can create your better health and then do your due diligence as should to go and make sure that you research you know, the topics we discuss and, and uh, take care of yourself, basically discuss them with your medical doctor because we're not doctors. Um, you know, we, we've got great successes with health, but at the same time, you need to take, you know, you need to be really, really aware for yourself um, as well. So um, what we want to do in this episode is we want to give you practical information. So um, I'm going to fire through quite a few things. I'm sorry for going a little bit too quickly and maybe losing some of my bad side manner. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's just to give you as much information as possible. And then um, Cecilia and I will give you some links in the show notes um, where you can follow through and maybe dig in a little bit deeper um, if a topic grabs your intention. Um, And this is a really good point that I want to uh, leave with you as we start to dig into the details is um, always be very vigilant over what catches your intention rather than your attention because attention is very fleeting. It's extremely exciting. You know, every time we learn something new, we get excited about it because it's, you know, it's like, oh, it sounds so great. But intention is where you actually put attention into what you intend to do and you'll only intend to do things that are relevant to you right now. So make sure that what you're listening to is, you know, is relevant to you right now and it's something that you're going to follow through with because you don't want to disappoint yourself. And typically what happens is if you go and focus on things that are not relevant, you're going to sooner or later lose that, uh, you know, that excitement and and then you disappoint yourself. And Um, Anita, just just a question before we move forward. So Sometimes I, we don't really know what's relevant and we got to test it. So you suggest that maybe you will cover this later, but would you suggest that we try everything that we listen to today and we see what we can stick to or 
should we just pick one thing and just run with it for a while? That's a very good question. And it's kind of the answer is kind of both. Um, I would say pay attention to what excites you out of today's conversation. I'm going to give you a few tips. And then, you know, some of you would want to lose weight. Some of you would be aware that you need more energy throughout the day in a more consistent manner. Some of you will be battling with your sleep, um, etc. So whatever your relevant kind of um, front and center problem might be at the moment or, or something that you're really attracted by, pay attention to what inspires you in our conversation and maybe start there because you're most likely to carry through with that. And definitely stick with one thing at a time. And that's the whole point of, like you mentioned in the intro, um, the whole point of the buy upgrade method, the three-step method is to keep it simple, you know, to to just pick that one thing, focus on it until it becomes part of your new, you know, who you are. And then um, after that, maybe add on one more thing that complements that first habit and then another one. And, and that's how you actually leverage the power of habit because you don't, like, you don't create a brand new thing every single time. You don't overwhelm the system, um, you know. And this is very much uh, kind of like the Kaizen methodology in business that we've all heard about. Um, you know, step by step, but you're building a very, very solid incremental uh, change habit, you know, so towards your health. Right. So that's, yeah. <laughs> okay. So before we get into the three-step method, which is, um, you know, kind of the meat and potatoes that we want to fully disclose with you today, I wanted to give or to, um, I think it's important to help you see the way you, um, you know, to, to help you see that the way you might be thinking about um, what it takes to be healthy and fulfilled might be a little bit wrong. And I'm sorry to say that you might be wrong, but just, you know, you know, follow through with me over here and explore where I'm, where I'm going with this. So most of us see um, what's wrong with our health um, you, or our body or our mindset. We see them as isolated instances or isolated inv- events. Um, so what I want to invite you to consider is that You need to see your body as a system, right? And your body is a system within the ecosystem of your environment, right? It's it's you um, and your environment is created by your business, by your team, your family, friends, the air that you breathe, the foods that you eat, the noise that you hear, the hobbies you do or don't do, you know. So all of that creates this, this environment for you every single day. And then within the system of your body, you've got... Um, subsystems and in the bio upgrade method I've decided to kind of um, round up those systems in only five you know oversimplified but just for the sake of retention I've, I've rounded up into five subsystems and those five subsystems create um, you know what you experience in conjunction with the ecosystem of your body and, and that creates the experience for you on a daily basis so if you're feeling that you don't have constant energy um, that is a byproduct of your environment, so your ecosystem, and then the, the subsystems within you. And those subsystems, just to give you an idea, are, um, I call them eat well, which is obviously to do with nutrition and perhaps supplementation if you decide to go that route. The second one would be rest daily, and that means that you sleep well, you sleep long enough, and then you also take breaks regularly throughout the day. And then um, moving often, which means movement throughout the day, not just for, uh, you know, for your workouts. And then um, the fourth one is make happy, which is deliberately called make happy because it emphasizes the fact that you need to be proactively creating that happiness for yourself and that well-being. Um, and the final one is clean up, which not many people will talk about, but that's, that's to do with detoxing on a daily basis and then periodically, maybe once a quarter, depending on what your health can handle and and needs at the time. So if you think of your body as a system that is defined by its ecosystem, the the ecosystem of its environment, and then is controlled and regulated by the subsystems within it, now you get a perspective of what it takes to create a a chronic disease, for example, what it takes to create migraines or what it takes to create poor sleep quality. Um, It's not just one thing. It's not like, and and the reason why I try to educate the people I work with about this is that if you, for example, are not sleeping well, you can't think that just by going and sorting out your sleep, everything, you know, this is it, you're going to sort your sleep out once and for all, and and that's going to be it, right? And it's never going to break again. So, um, and very often when people think of symptoms or conditions in, in an isolation, not as a system, 
what happens is they get themselves into this trap of looking for the for the answer, for the panacea, for the one solution that will end all of their suffering. Um, and unfortunately, because life implies that it's a journey, right? As long as we live, we're going to create damage in our bodies, which is technically inflammation. We're going to talk about this in a moment. Um, you're going to create inflammation. You're going to start aging. You're going to face new challenges. And I'm not saying this to depress you. I'm just saying this to kind of to frame your journey for you so that you can embrace it. You can understand that you always need to take care of yourself. That's part of life, right? We don't like resolve our health once and for all and then move on. Um, it doesn't happen. It's never happened to anyone I've worked with, um, unfortunately. And it doesn't matter, you know, how great you might feel right now. It will eventually need your attention again. And when you approach your health um, from that perspective, you understand that you don't need to sort out everything in one go. You don't need to clear your schedule for three months just so you can, you know, look after your health and build these healthy habits and then, you know, live happily forever after, right? So, and, and this is my urgency. This is like what I get goosebumps about when I talk to people is I want to inspire them to just get started. Like create that, you know, whether you know, we're going to talk about, I'm going to give you some um, actionable uh, tactics that you can use, for example, to create a, a or at least to, to give yourself a little bit of a more proactive way to sort out stress in your life. Um, later on in this uh, conversation but for, for the moment what i want you to internalize is that take that one thing that inspires you right now and then you know just have a read up about it and then tomorrow start making changes in that direction and it doesn't matter how small those changes are as long as they're focused and as long as they are consistent and you're doing them day by day i right? feel this is so liberating actually i mean I, at least it happens often to me. I try, I tend to think either all black or all white. I I have a hard time living in the gray area, meaning, um, well, either I, I go full in or I just don't, right? And I apply this to my nutrition, to my workout. I think there is this a funny metaphor. I mean, maybe not so funny considering that it involves our smartphones, um, which now are more like curse than a blessing. But in a way, uh, this, this analogy says, well, if, if your phone uh, falls right off your pocket, it's not that you're going to step on it with your shoes trying to break it even more, um, which is exactly what we do instead when, let's say, for example, we start eating some chocolate because we feel a little bit sad. And then all of a sudden we end up uh, eating the whole fridge because, I mean, we kind of broke the pattern and now we are losers. And I mean, we got to... We got to find um, a way out of that pattern. And I think this idea of taking one step at a time, even if applied outside the health, um, you know, realm, if we apply yeah. this to business, if we apply this to anything that we're doing, whether it's writing a book or finding our soulmate, it could really start creating the changes that we are looking for. We're so much looking forward to. Yeah, it's um, and it's about falling in love with the process and falling in love with yourself and giving yourself the permission to enjoy this. It doesn't have to be, you know, when I speak to people and we talk, you know, like the first times we speak, for example, and we speak about having to change their health or having to change their habits to create better health, it feels to them, it feels like doomsday. It feels like yeah. this is it. I've got to give up everything I'm going to ever enjoy. I'm never going to touch chocolate or cake or bread or you know, anything that you ever enjoy, it doesn't matter even if it's a healthy salad, right? You usually would enjoy it. But if you're doing a diet, all of a sudden the salad is like punishment from above, right? Um, so what I want to kind of put out there is give yourself the permission to enjoy these healthy changes. You're not doing it because you've been punished. You're doing it to create better energy for yourself. And this is what you want. And if you don't want better energy, then you shouldn't be torturing yourself with it, right? Um, it's a different situation for people that ha uh, that are in chronic pain. You know, I can totally understand that. But even then, you know, you can gamify it in your mind. You can change your mindset and start looking at this as a, how can I nurture myself? Because, and this is what I mean by taking care of the business of you. Because there's nobody that's going to ever have more vested interest in looking after yourself than yourself. That's it. It's not your doctor. It's not your government. It's not, I don't know, your health insurance. It's not your mom, dad, etc. Nobody else is going to look after you with more interest than you should. And and I think in our society, we just need to give ourselves the permission to say, you know what, I should spend some time on myself because if I don't, nobody else is going to do it. 
you know, it's like, and so many people that I speak to um, that own their own business, it's so easy to dedicate 24 seven on your business because, you know, we've been brought up to believe that this is our responsibility. So it's okay to absolutely run yourself into the ground, but it's not okay to take 15 minutes to, um, you know, walk outside in the grass with your toes in the grass and feel the wind in your hair and, and not think about business, you know. So these are the kind of what I want to say, like, think of yourself as this ecosystem because just changing one thing, you know, turning one of the dials, like we were saying about um, sleep, just getting better sleep. Yes, that's going to create better sleep and more well-being in you for those like maybe three months, four months. And then something's going to catch up with you if you don't make, um, you know, make an effort to, for example, now uh, eat a little bit better or eat a little bit better for you to aid that sleep, etc. So everything that you do in a day, everything that you experience in a day, uh, shapes how you feel in that day, shapes your well-being. Um, and so what I wanted to, unless you've got any questions at the moment. No, 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 uh, I don't want to ask you more questions, <laughs> even though I, I, I would love to. But no, go ahead with the three steps because I'm looking forward to hear them. Well, I wanted to give, because this leads kind of nicely into the um, an analogy that I wanted to give everybody just to, to give them a further reframe. And then we're going to go into the three-step formula because the three-step formula is very easy. And, and you actually, you know, people that are listening, please do not dismiss it just because it's so easy. Um, the power, you know, it, it, not the power, but the most difficult part is to create something simple that seems easy, but it's actually powerful and it works all the time. So this thing does work. Um, so I'm trying not to waffle, but I get so excited about this topic anyway. Um, so I wanted to introduce you to the inflammation bucket analogy. And again, we're going to put a link um, in the show notes if you wanted to explore this in a, bo- a bit more depth. But I'm going to give you the brief overview here just to give you the flavor. And um, so most health practitioners agree and researchers agree that um, the reason why chronic conditions and chronic disease happens to the body, and this is including aging, including you know, even migraines, um, poor sleep, etc. This this is something you might not regard as a chronic disease, obviously, because poor sleep isn't. Um, but most co- chronic conditions are created because of um, inflammation that gets built in your body. And inflammation in that respect basically is equated to damage that we cause to our body. And then overnight, for example, when we sleep, if we sleep well enough and long enough, we will repair some of the damage. Some of it obviously is reparable, and that's how aging happens. So if you bear that in mind, everything that you do in the day either creates inflammation or reduces inflammation, right? So this is a really simple concept. And then the further, the one step further from that is if you imagine that every morning, provided you had a really good reparative, restorative sleep, you uh, wake up with a, a, a bucket. So we're going to call it your inflammation bucket. And that bucket has a little bit like a, maybe a centimeter of that bucket is full of inflammation because we can't eliminate inflammation, you know, um, just breathing even causes inflammation. So you wake up with your bucket and it's almost empty and you're ready to face the day, you're full of energy, you had a good sleep, etc. And now you start to get ready for the day. By the time you've made a decision on what to wear or what to eat for breakfast, um, a little bit more inflammation is added to the bucket. By the time you, because the decision fatigue, it takes, you know, a bit of brain power and um, nourishment. Uh, then you decide what you're going to have for breakfast. Then if you've got kids, for example, you've got to get them ready. They play up a little bit. Maybe you've got a teenager and they don't want to wake up and then etc. Presumably all parents over here know this picture to some extent. Um, then you've got to load them into the car, drive them to school, wherever you've got to drop them off, etc. Now by the time this whole process is finished, you've added quite a bit of inflammation to your bucket. Um, it's now about 10 o'clock on your way into work or into the office. You meet a friend that you absolutely love socializing with and you decide you're going to meet her for lunch that day and now you're all invigorated. So now this is a positive feeling and an example of how you reduce some of the inflammation in the bucket. So you get the idea here. Basically, throughout the day, you either add on to that inflammation depending on what you do. If you have like a stressful meeting at work with a client that's less than cooperative, for example, Um, then that's got to add to the bucket. And then let's say you had that stressful meeting and then you decided you're going to go to a yoga class. That's going to reduce the inflammation a little bit because it's restorative. And then you get to the end of the day, right, in the evening where you sit down with your partner, you cook a nice meal, let's say a piece of baked salmon with a lovely healthy salad with a nice dressing. Everything is amazing. 
you pour yourself a tiny glass of red wine and that's amazing. You sit down, you relax, you have your dinner. Um, you maybe watch your fav- uh, an episode of your favorite uh, serial and then you go to bed, you sleep amazingly well again. This word amazing keeps coming up. You wake up restored and the day begins again, etc., etc. right? And then the other hand, the other scenario that can we um, work up um, into this is you get to that dinner, you cook the same healthy meal, you sit down with the same amazing partner that you love over the same amazing glass of red wine. And um, maybe 20 minutes into the meal, you are bent over with absolute bloatedness, you know, bloated stomach. Then um, later on, maybe three hours into it, you're even more bloated than before. You can hardly fall asleep. If you fall asleep, you keep waking up. Um, eventually you get up to maybe go to the toilet because you needed to, you know, you drank too much water or whatever. And then you end up having a really poor sleep. You wake up shattered even more than when you went to bed. And then it's misery the whole next day. So this is basically the whole story of the inflammation bucket. Now, if you know about the inflammation bucket, you know that it doesn't matter what you feel the trigger is, which is for in this instance, you might think, if you were the person that um, ended up with the bloating, bloated stomach at the end of the evening, you might look back and go, oh, what did I eat that evening for the meal? And why am I feeling bloated? And then now you're going to start avoiding salmon or you're going to start avoiding cucumbers or whatever else you had in the salad, whatever your brain at the time decides that this was the trigger for your pain, um, which is a really, really slippery downward slope because before you know it, that's how all the exclusions start to happen and you exclude the next time you exclude a piece of steak, the next time you exclude, I don't know, uh, tomatoes, etc. And before you know it, you're eating three or four different items of food every single day of your life and then you're creating malnourishment in your body and then the cascade goes on from there and you're creating even more pain. Where if you knew about the inflammation bucket and you took into account that this is a system, your body is a system, it's never working in isolation, then you can look at this instance with the bloating at the end of the evening, look back on your day and go, actually what led to that evening is the entire day's events. It's my inflammation bucket that I carried through with me. And the salmon with the salad was just what tipped that flow of inflammation over the edge of that bucket, right? So that I'm having, you know, this bloated stomach, I couldn't sleep the whole night. So now when you know that, you can say, okay, how many other times have I had salmon and salad? And did it trigger me before? So you can see how now you can be on your problem solver. And as um, instead of um, creating these false positives or false negatives, you can be a little bit more objective about what is it that happened here? So in this instance, again, you will look back on your day and go, I had this really massive car crash of a a meeting with this client and they really weren't happy and I spent the rest of the day trying to problem solve for them. I didn't have the time to go to my yoga class so therefore I didn't get the restorative power yoga class. I went straight home and then we had to try and cook dinner and and, you know really quickly etc. Created more inflammation blah 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 the bucket overflowed. So now you go okay I'm going to relax about this. I'm not going to stress out about it. It was one day. I'm not going to agonize over it. The next day, the next time I want to have salmon with salad, I'm going to relax into it, enjoy it, you know, take the pleasure, etc. Et, 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 et. Yeah. So, so paying so, attention to patterns in a way by taking a step back, yeah. which is probably the simplest and hardest thing to do at the same time nowadays. Exactly. And bearing in mind that it's the it's the totality of your day's experience in that ecosystem, you know, that you move into that creates what you, you know, what you experience at the end of the day or in any given time of the day, because sometimes things that happen even up to 72 hours beforehand could trigger later on. So again, not being so hard on yourself and then getting that perspective, that pulling away, like you said, and and seeing um, as it were the, the forest instead of just the individual trees. In a problem. It would be nice to uh, imagine that we are scientists and we're just rolling up our sleeves and just trying to experiment and see what happens if we create different combinations of events and uh, of events throughout our day, whether it's a meal that we're having or a conversation uh, or or a class that we missed or that we actually attended and so on yeah. and so forth. Yeah. And that creates that distance. And like you were giving the example before, where uh, it's all or nothing. No, it's not. It's 
it's about enjoying the journey. It's all about enjoying the journey because nobody's rushing to the end of the journey, right? I'm not rushing for the grave, that's for sure. <laughs> so, True that. Yeah. So the point isn't to tick boxes. The point is to enjoy the journey. And that's the only way you're going to do this is if you cut the guilt and if you become objective and actually see the facts the way you would do it in business, right? Except that business tends to be a little, a little bit less emotional because it's not in our bodies. Yeah. So I'm conscious of time. The three steps formula, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So step one is really simple and we spoke about it already. Choose the one thing, and, and I'm emphasizing here the one thing that catches your intention, meaning it's something that you are ready to act on, right? You, If you had to ask yourself, okay, this thing that I'm contemplating at the moment, like for example, uh, let's say I want to start drinking more water every single day, right? When you say that thing and you ask yourself on a scale of, of one to 10, how ready am I to take action on this? If you answer anything below eight and you're not allowed to give a seven, then you're not ready for this. Pick something else. It's fine. You'll get to the water thing eventually. Just pick something else. Um, if you say um, eight out of ten or nine or ten out of ten, ready, go for it. Right? So, then you can. So some examples could be well the water examples, but uh, also for example you mentioned um, the movement. So I'm just gonna take a ten minute walk every day before going to work. That could be uh, you know like a. Um, yeah recovery activity that for our uh, inflammation bucket or I'm gonna sleep I'm gonna go to sleep 10 or 15 minutes earlier uh, every night for a week C could we give yes. ourselves a time frame to stick to instead of saying oh, from now on I'm gonna try and do this yes absolutely so um, and this goes into the second step but I will address exactly so make sure that it's whatever you choose it's so I like to call it you know, it's so simple, stupid, right? Stupidly simple that you cannot not come up and do it, right? So instead of the 10 minute walk, I'll go over and say five minute walk. In fact, even if you want to incorporate more movement, um, just create opportunities to move, me meaning like every hour you get up and you just move your arms around, you wave them like a crazy person, or you just jump and bounce around in the spot. Um, something that I've implemented with great success and I had really good feedback and it's really simple to remember is every time I go to the toilet to, to pee, right? Because we all have, a, have to pee. <laughs> and hopefully peeing more than once a day, right? So every time you finish the way, choose two exercises that you can do in the toilet because nobody's looking at you, so you don't, you're not embarrassed. So let's say air squats. So you're just squatting up and down, up and down, up and down. If you can handle that, do 10 of those and do five jumps, like where you just jump and bounce your body so that all the blood starts to circulate again, right? And you find that, it's kind of a gamification. It gets the blood moving again and it gets you really giggly because you, you know you look stupid, but there's nobody there to see you. And then you, you, you walk out and people start looking at you funny because you look, you've got this nice rosy cheeks and then you look a little bit flustered and wondering like what happened in the toilet, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So these are like, so whatever you pick, you know, um, again, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we want to get through the... Um, through the three-step method, but pick a habit that you've been thinking about or pick a habit that resonates with you and make it really, really simple. You know, notice, for example, if you wanted to take a break from, from the screen, notice something outside that's got to do with nature and, you know, notice the colors that are going. Even, I mean, for some of us, even that breaks from the whole, you know, intensity of staring at a screen 24-7, which creates a lot of uh, imbalances, right? Um, okay, so step one is choose what you want to do, choose what catches your attention and you feel excited about, make it simple. Step two is prepare and schedule it. Now, this sounds a little bit more intense than it needs to be. <laughs> All I mean is if you intend to drink, uh, let's say, two liters of water a day, make sure that you're prepared by having um, at least like a liter bottle, um, I would say glass, definitely not plastic unless it's BPA-free plastic. So prepare a glass bottle that's one liter, and if you like your water cold, make sure that you've got two of those bottles. So one of the bottles can sit in the fridge and be cold, and then the other one can stay with you. And then as soon as you finish the one, you swap them around and you go into your second one, right? So, and then um, the other part of the preparation would be, okay, before lunch, I have to finish the one bottle. After lunch, I have to finish another bottle. So that makes you two liters of water, right? So just put a little bit of, just like you would do for your business. And this is really kind of keen on putting this message across. You run your business already. So the business of you is no different from that. It's just, it, it, you know, it, um, it makes sense that you make that decision. 
you prepare a little bit so you're not caught off guard like, oh, what am I going to drink from? I've got to get up every two minutes to go and fill up a glass. You're going to forget, absolutely. So rather be prepared, right? And then when I say schedule it, anchor it to something. So I already kind of gave that step away <laughs> a little prematurely. But, you know, so anchor it to, okay, when I brush my teeth in the morning, I'm going to fill up my first bottle. And then um, after my lunch, I'm going to fill up my second bottle, for example, if that's, we're going to stick with that example, right? Um, and whatever habits it is, try and anchor it onto an existing habit already that happens at roughly the same frequency. So I gave you an example with the toilet break beforehand, right? If you're going to anchor some movement, it's nice to do it to the toilet break because let's face it, you're going to go into the toilet about five or six times a day. That's a healthy amount typically, right? Um, so you get five or six opportunities to trigger a different behavior that's going to make you more energetic. And you're going to, you know, you're going to want to do more eventually. Um, if it's something that happens twice a day, then maybe anchor it to brushing your teeth because you've got to brush your teeth. You're already used to that habit, right? Some of us get a little bit paranoid if we don't do it. So it's a perfect opportunity for you to just anchor something to that and then use that as a trigger for the new behavior. And so step three <laughs> is the final step, which is basically show up which means, you know, when you go to the toilet, I'm going to keep talking about toilets because clearly people are not going to fall asleep with that topic at least. Um, when you go to the toilet, remember that you promised you're going to do those two exercises. And at first you're going to feel that pressure. You're going to say like, oh, no, I just want to walk out of there and, you know, resume my day because I've got, I'm so busy. I've got clients to attend to. I've got, you know, this task that I'm halfway through and I just took a small pee break. Um, you know, it's going to take you 20 seconds to complete the two movements. So please don't don't cut yourself short. Don't do yourself a disservice. Um, if it is to fill up your bottle of water, how long does it take to fill up a bottle of water? It's, you know, 10 seconds, maybe. If you've got a really slow tap, 20 seconds. In the grand scheme of things, you've got to have 20 seconds to dedicate to your health. If you don't, then you've got a totally different problem that we need to address with another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And <laughs> so, I know, those I know. are the two steps. So, yeah. so basically, pick one thing and keep it simple. Set yourself yeah. to win and show up. We could yeah. summarize it that way. I know there were also a um, couple of mental tools that you had to share. Um, maybe we're going to go five minutes overboard, but I would love to hear what those are. Yeah, I would love to give you two that are, again, super easy. And I've seen such an amazing results with everybody that I've literally even just mentioned these things in passing. And they've picked them up and for whatever reason, maybe they got excited about it or maybe they thought it was funny and ridiculous. Um, they've picked up those habits and, and they've come back to say that like literally it's transformed the way they feel about themselves. And I know it sounds really trivial, but please trust me, this has happened time and time again. So there's two that I want to share with you. One is mind your ABCs, right? So everyone knows the alphabet, so you can't forget this. Like it's a really easy trigger. So your ABCs basically stands for um, awareness breathe and then choose right so abcs and this tool is particularly helpful when you want to create a little bit of distance between a problem that triggers you emotionally and finding a solution or, or, or figuring out how do you actually want to show up for this problem or how do you want to react to it right so this would be helpful for if you're meeting somebody that rubs you up the wrong way for example, but you have to endure their company, right? So this is a really good way, really good tool. If, for example, you have a stressful situation with the kids, this is a really useful tool in an interven intervention. Um, you've just heard that a client is particularly, you know, pissed off about stuff that you've done or unhappy, should we say, sorry, a little bit more better term than um, the other one. You know, so this is basically you, you take a breath and this is the awareness. So this is the way you, you get the awareness that something's happening, you know, and, and it's really physically easy to feel when you're about to get stressed. So you look inside your body and you go, oh, oh I'm about to get stressed and aggravated or I'm about to get triggered and explode in anger or something is about to happen and I can feel it as a physical sensation in my body. So this is awareness, your A. Then you take a breath, which is your B. And the breath basically creates that distance between the emotion and what's in, and the actual situation that triggered it. And then you can ask yourself, okay, what is it that I want out of the situation? And then that's your choice. And if you still choose to explode and, and be angry and react to that person's, you know, stupidity, for example, um, that's fine. That's perfectly okay because you decided that this is the right way to do it. 
yeah, or you decided that this is what you wanted to do at the moment, but you gave yourself the choice as opposed to what we typically tend to do in stressful situations, which is just be reactive. And then once the situation is over, things have settled, we start to feel guilty and we start the self-talk and we tell ourselves how crappy we were or that person really didn't deserve our, you know, us exploding all over the place or, you know, I could have handled this better and now I'm feeling like an idiot and I've got to go and apologize. You know, these are all the little things that come afterwards that really just create more and more of the stress and, and inflammation we were talking about earlier. So mind your ABCs, really easy. And then the second one, I'm going to go straight into, second one is more physical and it's it's a little bit childish and ridiculous, but that's what makes it more memorable. Um, so before I move on, the ABCs, write them down on the post-it notes in the beginning and stick the post-it notes. And this is a tip that I got from a client. It wasn't my idea, so I've got to give credit. So basically he wrote down on um, little post-it notes and just wrote ABCs, ABCs, mind your ABCs and put them all over the house. And um, so that's how he introduced himself into the, the habit and intervention. But something that happened for him that I thought was quite beautiful, and I'm still getting goosebumps from, you know, when I tell the story, is that um, his little son, he had like a, a six-year-old son in his house. Um, so eventually he, he noticed that the son started to go like, oh, dad, mind your ABCs. <laughs> Every time that the dad was about to get triggered or something. Or the son would actually go and use it with his friends. So, you know, it's like, it's this beautiful nuance that happens when you try and, you know, change things for that. So, okay, the last one is the physical intervention. And this is called some, um, something that's called the um, zebra technique, the shaking zebra technique. And this is something that came out of a book called, um, I think it's written by Hal Elrod, but I'm probably getting stuff confused. Um, the book is called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, it is a purely scientific book, by the way, and really interesting. Mm, pretty much nothing to do with zebras other than the fact that most mammals have been gifted with this physical system in their body um, that basically allows them to flush out adrenaline that gets built up into the system due to stressful situations. So all of us as mammals have been created by nature to experience periods of extreme stress and then to level them out by rest and then extreme stress, and then level them out by stress, I mean by rest. <laughs> Instead, what's happened is exactly what I just said, is we are in constant stress, right? So we never get that respite from the stressful episodes. So we, we've, when cortisol gets raised, which is the stress hormone, um, we release adrenaline, which helps us deal with the stressful situation, right? It powers us up, basically. And that adrenaline stays in our tissues, and stays in our muscle tissue, stays in our blood. Um, it's everywhere, right? And because we don't necessarily take any specific action. So like if you go to a yoga class, for example, that would be a physical way for you to flush that adrenaline out of your tissues and then eventually excrete it as a toxin, either through sweat, either through breath or in your number twos, for example. Yeah. Um, but if we don't do something immediately, that, that adrenaline builds up in the tissue and it causes chronic inflammation eventually, which expresses in many different symptoms, right? It's, it's like it's too many to mention at the moment. Um, so the shaking zebra technique basically allows you to artificially flush the adrenaline out of your tissues physically like um, in, and literally flush it out of there so that it's moved into your bloodstream and then eventually excreted in your sweat, in your breath, in your, you know, uh, wee, etc. So every mammal has that naturally. If you can visualize uh, a zebra that's just been chased by a lion, um, it escapes the lion and then it stops by a watering hole and then you, you see the zebra just before it goes down to take some water to, you know, to, to oh, I don't know, to satisfy its thirst. Sorry, my English is failing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just before it goes to drink water, it starts to shake its skin uncontrollably all over the place. And it goes literally from head through to its little hooves and then back again. And then it stops and then it's all happy. So basically, that's the process that nature's gifted to it because they can't think. They don't have the, the you know, the benefit of a thought process. Um, so they've given them a mechanical process to flush the adrenaline out. So it's the same technique here. So basically, every time you, you know, you've had a stressful episode, again, mind your ABCs. So be aware of the fact that you've stressed out. Take exactly 30 seconds, right? And all you need to do is stand straight and then you start bouncing as if you were on a trampoline, like you're on a little rebounder, you just bounce really energetically up and down and you let 
everything flop. It looks ridiculous. And I know some people are going to give you looks in the office if you've got people around you. Um, but you know what? It's actually a lot of fun. And when you explain to people why you're doing it, it gets a little bit contagious and it's kind of like a game. So you start to do it. And now um, I've actually started a trend to, after every single uh, workout class that I'm in, we would start doing that and then people would actually start copying it. Um, and you feel at the end of it, if you feel buzzy. You can feel your entire energetic field change, you know, like because we all made of electricity and mag magnetic uh, fields, right? So by shaking all of this, you're also releasing little pockets of, of toxins that usually would stay stagnant in your body because you don't have any way of moving them. Um, now you're moving them out into your bloodstream and again you're allowing them to get excreted, excreted into, etc. you know, like urine and, and yeah. sweat, etc. and your breath and so on. So that's it. I wow, think I like... <laughs> I would go on and on and on and on. Honestly, I love these topics. Um, I am a little bit lazy when it comes to really digging into the science behind them, which is why I love this episode so much because you managed to, I'm beyond amazed actually by the amount of practical uh, tools that you managed to share with us in such a simple way. Because sometimes, let's be honest, the scientific books are not something that people are going to read easily. They, I mean, we barely have time to, you know, pick one thing set ourselves to win and show up. Forget about, you know, starting to read all the information that we should be aware um, when it, about when it comes to our health. So thank you so much for sharing all this. And before we come to the end of our conversation, I actually want to ask you, Anita, where we can find you? Where can we find more about what you study, what you research and what you actually um, experiment with? Um, well, thank you for asking. Uh, well, you can find me on tiny little businesses dot com um you'll see all of my stuff there um, i work with my husband um you know we work in our business we love what we do and we love the people we do it for um so go ahead and go there but i think what would be more important we'll put some links for you if you want to dig deeper into the topics we we'll put some links uh, below uh, in the show notes and i think more importantly than ever or something that i'm really interested in the way you would really kind of inspire me i suppose is if you share your, you know, the one thing that caught your attention from our conversation, because we gave you a lot, you don't, please don't go and do everything. Um, that's, you know, that will be a little bit of a type A personality uh, way of operating. Choose one thing that that um, grabbed your intention. Remember intention, because you intend to do something about it and you're excited about it. Share it with us in your comments, in the comments below the episode. Um, and then I can, you know, if you've got any questions for me there, then I can chime in and maybe help you uh, take the, you know, the one next action that's going to make a change in your health. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm going to remind you girls that if you are listening to this episode on Spreaker, iTunes, Spotify or somewhere else, which I mean, I lost count of all the platforms out there, head your sweet bum over to bitacademy.at slash forward podcast and join the discussion right now there all right so we're gonna looking forward to uh hearing your thoughts and uh, your biggest eye uh, aka intention um especially because from that intention we're gonna start putting into practice something out of this episode which is the most important part of the whole thing i will meet you very soon for another episode of impact girl and uh well thank you again anita it was a pleasure it was amazing i hope we're gonna do this again thanks cecilia it was a pleasure for me as well thank you questo è tutto per la puntata di oggi, spero di averti dato qualche utile spunto che potrai implementare sin da subito. Se crescere un business in cui credi sul web in modo autentico e proficuo è parte dei tuoi piani e non sei ancora entrata a Biz Academy, puoi farlo visitando il sito biz-academy.it. Noi come sempre ci sentiamo o vediamo alla prossima puntata di Impact Girl.